Hi guys, welcome to vlog 40 and the first part of my wildlife filmmaking techniques which I'm calling subject shot variety and micro storylines. Bit of a mouthful, uh, but I've had to really uh, reverse engineer pretty much everything I've learned in wildlife filmmaking over the last seven years to come up with five categories, uh, which I know personally uh, caused me a fair bit of grief uh, during my, uh, and I'm certainly not off the learning curve, believe you me, but during my time making wildlife films. Uh, this first one, really, in a nutshell, is just mixing up your shots. Uh, but actually, one of the most difficult to overcome because if you've come from a history like me uh, of being a photographer, then one shot was good enough, the, the, the best shot you can get. But as a filmmaker, it's very different, especially dealing with wildlife. Uh, you have to create, you're supposed to create, and rightly so, compose a storyline, uh, even if it's a very small one. So a variety of shots, absolutely uh, the bedrock of filmmaking. So let's just suggest now that we've come across a subject, whether it could be bird or beast, uh, it might have been something you've been waiting passively for, for hours, uh, it might be something that just turns up in front of you. Uh, but forgive me, I thought best to deal with this with a little doodle. I'm going to make our subject a bird on a branch, no more than that. Uh, when I do this, of course, I'm conscious about getting the, the first composition uh, right in my frame. I'm using the rule of thirds. Uh, you all know this, I'm sure. Uh, I'm putting my subject into an area where it looks into the empty space of the frame, or at least has an area to travel into. But immediately, a stopwatch has started in my head, and I give myself a very short amount of time for this shot. Uh, I give myself 15 seconds maximum. Uh, why on earth? Well, I'll come to that in a second. One thing to too remember though is I do film in 4K at 30 frames a second and that's because more often than not then I can reduce in post uh, the speed uh, to 80% uh, which gives me then 24 frames a second which is a cinematic standard but affords me an extra 3 seconds for a 15 second shot so I'm up to 18 seconds already. And I'll do this because immediately I know I need to create a sequence for a storyline and I want to put this bird in its environment, in its habitat. There's nothing better to the viewer's eyes than having a subject and then seeing where it is, properly seeing where it is in its environment. So the second shot, the key shot, is the bird in situ, wherever it may exist. Now normally I would give for this particular shot the same amount of time as I would give for my primary shot. So around about 15 seconds, it can be 10 seconds, uh, but certainly no more than the 15 seconds. I'm then thinking of shots three and four possibly, if the subject allows. But the key thing is I now have two sequences and these are two sequences I can edit from and create a storyline. Now, the primary shot may not be my first shot in the edit. I may choose my wide angle shot as my first shot and then go to my primary shot as the second part of the sequence and come back for a final stab of the wide angle shot and having a three capture sequence in my edit. Um, you might also actually, it's a good idea, uh, sometimes for your wide angle shot to be your final shot because there's a much better frame here for your subject to leave um, with a bird obviously flying out of frame uh, or with a mammal walking out of frame but that certainly does afford a, a wonderful visual completion for the viewer. Now using that as a very basic idea of what we mean by mixing up the shots and creating micro storylines. Let me take you to Dollar Brand, the 15th century cottage in Wales that I went to last May because here on arrival I was delighted to find a nest box being used by no other than a pair of pied flycatchers, a wonderful bird. So shot number one, primary shot, right there in front of me, it was a given wasn't it? Uh, a perfect scenario of a bird coming to a very definite spot certainly going to be my primary shot uh, so I certainly took enough of them I can tell you now but then a few hours later I did notice my male pie flycatcher out on the surrounding pasture collecting invertebrates for the meadow itself got a fairly wide angle shot of that and it flying back to a barbed wire fence which it, it persistently used in fact it tends to use it at a meter and a half length of this fence which I then got into shots and into composition and managed to pull off an entry to the barbed wire uh, down to meadow and an exit all in the one shot so there was very definitely my shot 
decree. So now a storyline was building in my head. Here I could have uh, my male pipeline catcher collecting invertebrates from the meadow and then taking its journey back to the box. But I really then wanted another shot. I wanted the, a shot of the bird on the way to the box through this copse, this copse attached to the cottage. That meant then the next day I searched out some of the viable perching spots, in fact some of the spots I'd seen these birds, these pair of birds perched on, and set up the camera, created a composition to the best of my ability to where I thought the birds might be, and left the camera running. I ended up with files and files and files of this, basically empty branches. Uh, but it is worth it because if you get it right and if you're lucky and if you persist, you're bound to be lucky, then you'll end up with a shot of the subject entering the frame, which is absolutely gold dust to any filmmaker. It's a wonderful thing to see, a very visceral thing for a viewer to see your subject coming into frame and then leaving frame. Uh, it's like you've second guessed the situation. Of course, you haven't, you've just persisted and persisted until eventually, just like this, you get some success. Now this was the female pie fly catcher. I managed to pull off the second perspective here as well in the one shot which I was really pleased with. That was a bit of quick quick moving. Um, and again the female a little bit too high in the frame on this one. I thought she would perch lower. You can see she's a little bit out of focus there. Uh, but eventually patience paid off and I got this shot. The very briefest shot of the male passing through perfectly in the middle of the frame there. That was my shot for so the sequence went like this. This is the edited sequence. So initially shot three uh, from the barbed wire to the meadow, which of course was my shot two. So shot three to shot two, this is the way the edit was going. And then back for the second part of my shot three, back to the barbed wire. You can see the way this is headed. And then the bird then obviously heading out into the copse towards the box. And there was my shot four that you just saw passing through and ending up in my, my first shot. Uh, when I arrived at the cottage, but now the end of my edit and the end of the sequence. A lovely, fluid transition from meadow to box, carrying its invertebrates back to its chicks. Would I change any of that? In hindsight, yes I would. And I'll tell you why. I would mirror the box shot. Now the box, as you can see, is over on the left and the bird arrives on the right. Why on earth would I do that? Well, let me show you. Let's go back to the original edit from last year. Up for the meadow, right to left onto barbed wire. For the barbed wire to copse, right to left to the branch. But then suddenly, my last piece of the edit, left to right initially, originally, now of course, right to left also. So I'm getting right to left, right to left, right to left through my last sequences. A much more fluid encounter with this bird, much more pleasing to the viewer. And there we go, you see, there's always something to learn and always something we can change uh, with these sequences. And that's the wonder, that's the joy that I get from filmmaking. So, as a rundown, I would always shoot the closest full subject as a priority, no longer than 15 seconds, to then cut away and show my subject in its habitat. And then, of course, if the subject allows, increase further shot variety, show it with some behaviour. And also, always consider your final edit and the micro story you want to create. Well, that's it guys for vlog 40. I hope you enjoyed the first part of my wildlife filmmaking techniques. More to come between now and the new year. But I'll be back next Sunday for vlog 41. And between now and then, take care and goodbye.